Hello everybody, this is Eric from Team Interstellar. Today I'm here with Andrew Johnson, who finished second place at the South Park, Pennsylvania Regional. So let's see what you got. Um, my name is Andrew Johnson. Uh, I finished second at South Park. Um, I was on Medanium, um, had a DM. Um, I put, we was eight rounds of Swiss because there was 247 players. Um, my matchups were first round with Fable Super, well, Fable Super Heavy. The second round was um, Adventure Synchron. Third round was Dragon Link. Fourth round was Flu. Uh, fifth round was Rescue Ace. Shout out to Gavin. Uh, sixth round was Pearly. Seventh round was Rika. That's the guy I lost to. And eighth round was Infernoble. Um, I lost four die rolls. And I, in the lost die rolls, I went three and one. Uh, the one being round seven where I lost to the Rika Sun Avalon player. For sure. All right, let's check out the list. All right, um, so first off, we start off, we have three Vs of Star Frost. Um, this is standard. Um, he burnt our crops. He went and <laughs> he went, he visited other planets. And this is the key piece in order that combines the Manadium and the Scareclaw engines together because. You use Dissipator to summon this, and you go into your Scare Claw line. Absolutely. Um, we go three Room Heart. This is the best starter in your deck. Or no more special summon. You get to search any Mana DM card that includes one of the balls, that includes one of the Spell of Traps. Um, and it helps you dodge, and it can help you dodge targeting interruptions such as Book of Moon, Ampere and Veiler, things like that. Um, also, it can help you just get a card in the grid just in case you need to because I had somebody book me close the right card of mine and I just used this to pop it just to get the right card in the grid so I could special summon it back off a rival and still play the game. Um, for the balls, we have three Manadium Meek. These are the only balls I played because these are the only balls you need. Mm -hmm. um, in testing, the in testing, I found out that if you have too many balls in hand, that they will brick you um so fearless is bad because fearless sucked even when we had even when it was the only other one and then torrid would have been good if it didn't have once per turn on it but the fact that it has once per turn on it means it's lackluster so this one is the only one that you need uh for the two scare claw for the scare claw we have i played two right card uh, i went back and forth between two and three uh, me and the people that I tested with, we went back and forth between two and three. And to be honest, the only reason why I didn't play three is because I wanted to keep the deck at 40. Right. Otherwise, I would probably be playing three because this is another starter. And this is one of the other. This is like the second best starter in your deck. Um, for a sub, uh, subset package, I played three Fenrir and three Scareclaw Cash. Femrear helps you go second because going second can be a problem for this deck. Um, you can pop Fenrir. You can use Visa to pop Fenrir. Visa can pop Fenrir to special summon Visa. And Fenrir can summon Scareclaw Cash. And you can special summon Scare, can search Scareclaw Cash. And then if you summon Scareclaw Cash, you can link it off for the link one in order to go into your Scareclaw lines in a pinch if you need to. And also can help problematic monsters like Noir, Chaos Angel, things like that. Play through Nib too. Play through Nib. Uh, for the monster hand traps, I played three Ash. Um, yes, I understand it conflicts with the field spell because it is a tuner, but the field, but the field spell only conflicts if Room Heart is on board. Because the field spell only because the field spell says light monsters you control. So if you have right card, then it doesn't conflict at all. And I just felt that Ash was better than Drew this format. Um, because Unchained, because of Lab, because of Pearly, because of almost anything else. I branded because you know Ash on branded fusion, unless their hand is really good, it's still pretty close to an FDK. So I just feel like Ash was better than Drew this format. And I would prove it correct because Ash was really good. Oh, Ash is also good against Rescue Ace. Ash on Emergency. Oh, yeah. Um, for the spells, we play, I played three Peaceful Planet Calarium. You know what this does. Search Visa. Search a Manadium monster. If a 
tuner gets popped and you can bring the tuner back now that also means the tuner can also bring bought back from the banish zone so it helps the deck play under shifter so you play three of this uh i played two rank phobia um i played two rank phobia because spoiler alert in the extra deck i played two of the link one and this card can sometimes in a pinch help you pop a card to help force interactions that you don't want to have to deal with on your monsters uh it searches scare it searches uh the right card it can search cash it can search scare card catch and also can search visa um and if you open up this and plan it if they don't have drew you can still full combo with it so it also has floodgates it does because you can because it's pop because if you have three defense position monsters you can pop any card oh yeah and we play two arrival um it's Monster Reborn for Scareclaw or Visa Starfrost. It's not once per turn. You play two. You play two right card. You play two field spell. You play two of the rank one. You play two of this. Um, I play two Obsession. Um, you really only need two. Right? You only need two. It will... And you can banish it to special summon a Visa from hand. Um, it pops any monster. So that way if someone book a moves or Book of Eclipse of one of your monsters, you can still activate this and target that book monster and still get a search off if you if necessary. So this card is good. The only problem is it has once per turn on it. So if you open up two, it's pretty bad, but you still want to see it. So that's why I played two. Also, it beats Ibley. It does. Because you can just pop the, cause you just pop the Ibley. Yep. And you're plusing. And <laughs> then you searched. Uh, imagining... Uh, you reveal a Manadium or Visa Star for uh, Manadium Monster. I wish they said Manadium card is the monster card to be better. Oh. But Manadium Monster or Visa Star Frost, you draw two and put one back. Uh, keep in mind, it does not have to be the mo be the card that you reveal. So you can put any of your bricks back. Again, this is once per turn. Also, otherwise, it probably would be at more than one in the deck. Uh, we play the one reframing, searchable kind of trap. Probably the only reason why you would want to play Manadium over Infernoble. But. It is a searchable kind of trap. It is an Omni Negate. And you put it with Baron Dissipator and Appaloosa. And unless your opponent opens up really specifically and really well, you basically FTK them. Uh, Rhoda. Um, spoiler alert, I didn't play Terraforming. I played Rhoda instead. The reason why I played Rhoda was unlike Terraforming, Rhoda directly gets you into a starter. Uh, terraforming gets you into something that can get you into a starter. Terraf Rota just directly gets you into the right card or the room heart that you need. So that's why I played that over Terror. Um, call by, call by stops Ash, call by stops TD Crow, call by stops Drew Lockbird, call by stops a lot of things. Play call by to help you not lose the hand traps. Uh, I played three tactics um i love three tactics all day i loved it when i saw it um i drew two i ripped cards and i took monsters and i did all three today and it was amazing all three times and i would never play this anything less than three well i would play that less than three if i could find thrust i don't have thrust but if I have thrust, I would probably run two thrust and two tactics because I can search tactics off thrust. But aside from that, I would just play three thrusts, three tactics. Um, and for my last defensive spell, we played three Book of Eclipse. Um, I understand that a rise heart is not in the format, but Pearly is still in the format. And being able to Book of Eclipse and combo decks are still in the format. So, and being able to just mass, put everything face down is still really good. I understand that they draw, but if you kill, but if you kill them, which is what Mana Diem does, then their draw cards don't really matter because Mana Diem is a combo deck. And like most combo decks, it's here for two turns. It's here for your turn and my turn. And for the last three, three defensive spells and permanents, I play three in perm. Um, it's effect Veiler that doesn't trigger tactics or thrust. 
and it's not once per turn. So I liked it all day. Um, it helped me play. It helped me beat birds because I opened up two because he had map and I think he had map and a Robina. So I had two and I was able to imperm both and then kill him on the crackback. Uh, that's the main, that's 40. Uh, I'll go into the extra deck. And we have two vicious astralile. Um, being able to miracle fusion this out because reasons is really good. Uh, this can't be destroyed by battle. This pops a card. This pops a monster. Uh, it gains attack and is already at 3k. And you use this in combo. And you use this in combo in order to help make the full board because it can pop any monster, including yours. Uh, we play Crimson Dragon. This card is really good. It has like three effects. Well, it only has two, but both effects are really good. It has the search, which I never use because I don't play any of the things to search. But being able to target, put itself back in its special summon from the extra deck and count it as a synchro summon is really good. Um, if I played the Calamity Lock, that would be really great, but I do not play the Calamity Lock because I feel like the Calamity Lock loses to too much and loses to Super Poly way harder. And I felt like if people were going to be on stuff like Branded Chimera and things like that, then that means they probably have Draco Request in the extra deck, which means that I would have just lost way more resources and with absolutely no crack back at all. But Crimson Dragon is the best, was is the best card in your extra deck because this card is amazing. Uh, I played Chaos Angel. I made it a couple times. It was good when I made it. Um, or in retrospect, I might not have played this. Um, I would have played Chin Ying, uh, the Sword Soul level 10, the original uh, Chin Ying, uh, because Chin Ying gets bigger and Chin Ying also offers an interruption. But Chaos Angel is still a really good card. It's just, I felt like Chingy might have been better to make because I made this like twice. But every time I made it, I killed my opponent. So, but this was like the one of the worst cards in the extra deck, but it's still a good card. Um, we make Baron. Everybody knows what Baron does. People have been playing Baron since 2022 and so so. People have been calling for Baron to get banned. I don't know why, but you know what Baron does. The best level 10 synchro to ever be printed. Uh, we play Dissipator. Probably the second best level 10 synchro to ever be printed. Um, it is a negate or pop. It is a special summon from the Banish Zone. It is 35. It's part of the combo to bring the Visa back to link off into the link one and get you into your scare claw lines to make the rest of the board. Uh, I played uh, the Ice Jade. This card was amazing. I always made this card when I could. And let's just say a lot of people had to read it and they didn't understand that it did all of the things that it did because being able to quick effect, say he, my cards cannot be destroyed or banished was really good. And if you activate it in something that responds to one of their cards, not only does that card get banished on the field, but also the cards ban, also you banish cards out their graveyard. So this card was really good all day, always made it when I could. And I would make it and I would play this again. Uh, Visus Amritara. You know, you play this majorly to at the end, toward the end of the combo to get the counter trap in some instances i got either field spell or the reborn spell to be able to extend if i had the counter trap in hand already but that's mainly what you use this for uh, one time it came up where i had to pop one of my own meats to make it a level four and try to do some wonky plays but that's mainly what you use this for you still have to play this card you can and also it, make the scare fall link with it which is important okay. That is true. You can't make the Scareclaw link with this because his name is Visa Starfrost on board. And we played Excel Synchro Dragon. Uh, I didn't make this, 
but you still have to make it but you still need to play this because this is one of the legal one is this is the other legal way you can make dissipator um if you know you know but yeah this is one of the legal ways to make dissipator you make it bring back to level two make dissipator or baron um uh, i didn't play stardust didn't feel the extra space were too tight to play stardust but i would honestly play this again uh for the link monsters i played access code this is basically to help me play through d barrier and to get cheap otks uh we play appalooza normally at the end of the combo you take the sheep you take the amri tara and you take the scare claw link one because again the amri tara is visa star is visa star frost on board so you can bring back the scare claw link one and then link those three off for appalooza for three along with your three level 10 synchros and your counter trap uh and then you have a three-man appalooza on top of all of that which makes the board pretty much unbreakable uh i play unicorn it is just a way to help this is the in-between piece to link up into access code so that way you can have your actual code be able to to target a link three and in a pinch you can just have it spin a card back uh we play cross sheet you need this because when you have a fusion, because you make a fusion monster, point to it to special summon a level four or lower out the grave. And if it already has a synchro monster that's linked to it, every monster on your board gains 700 attack. So that part never came up because once I got through the whole combo, people normally just scooped anyway. But if you do that, normally it has a bearing to one of the link arrows, which means that your bearing is 3,700 off the rip. Which makes which is kind of hard for most decks to get over. Uh, and then I play two scare claw. Um, the search effect, the search for the field spell is not once per turn. Um, that came up in round five actually when I played against Gavin. Um, he negated the first scare claw. Um, I activated a rival, and I was able to make the second scare to make the second one, and I was able to search the field spell. So, because the field spell search is not once per turn, the bring it back is once per duel. So, that's the extra deck, 15 in the extra. And then, go to the sideboard, uh, the will special, 2D barrier, 2 gamma seal, 2 drool. Hold on, yeah. 2 drool, 2D barrier, 2 gamma seal, 2 drool, uh, 2 nib. <laughs> so we play these two we played these these are cross out targets um i played those because i played that i did like that because i played two of for my cross out targets because my theory is if i'm going to play cross out if i draw the cross out target mm -hmm. i want to be able to actually use the cross out target and still have the cross out target live just in case they also have the same cross out target so if I had, so if I draw drool in my hand, I want to be able to cross out drool just in case they also have it. So that's why I play two of these. Um, I play two gamma seals. Um, it outs, you know, noir. It outs just in case somebody was still randomly playing dragoon or you know a problematic monster I would don't want to deal with. Um, I did gamma seal somebody's assembled nightingale because somebody made that in pearly. They overlaid the uh, black can the white trap for the simple nightingale, and I just. Gamma sealed on top of it and then proceeded to OTK on through it. Uh, speaking of cross out, three cross outs. Um, we don't like losing the Jewel and Lockbird. We don't like losing the Nib. We don't like losing We don't like having to waste in the gate on Book of Eclipse because I cross out designated somebody's Book of Eclipse. Because I cross out designated my last round matchup. He activated Book of Eclipse and I just was like cross out designated called Book of Eclipse and banished it. And he basically said, don't worry about it. We're going to get game three. And so this card is good when it works, but when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And then for the back row hate, three cosmics and a heavy and a harpy feather duster. Um, duster because it's duster, blowout card, and a cosmic cyclone, outs floodgates. And because it's a quick play, we activate this to make sure that Lapras doesn't get big ladies effect 
to be able to set and do labyrinth shenanigans because don't nobody got time for that. And 15 in the side. Awesome, man. Any shout outs? First of all, I'd like to shout out everybody on Team Interstellar, uh, the team I'm on. Uh, so that's everybody on the team Pat, Jake, Sam, Will, Vincent, Steven, Mitch, Barzak, Cody, Sean, Wiggins, <laughs> Eric. Max, it's everybody. I know I'm forgetting names. I feel bad. If I did forget your name, I'm sorry. Uh, shout out everybody at Rogue's Den. Uh, that's one of the locals that I go to. Shout out everybody at uh, Gaming Emporium, the other locals that I go to. Um, shout out guys that go to those locals like Omar, Eddie, uh, Cook, Williams, Beckles, Vincent, Jeremy. Um, Darion, those guys, and shout out to my wife. Uh, I love you and thank you for everything you do for me. Awesome, man. Again, congratulations. And this thank has you. been Eric with Team Interstellar signing out. Thank you.